Hello everybody and uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, we're not doing electrical engineering today though I am in the electrical engineering building. I'm um, over here at Purdue University MSWE 292 and uh, today we're going to talk about the concertinas <laughs> because why not. Um, so if you're a subscriber to my channel you probably are subscribing because you're a student. But if you're interested in concertinas let's talk about them for a minute. So I got the Ren 2, they call it the 2, but it doesn't have a 2 on it. Uh, the Ren from McNeela, uh, M-C-E-N-E-E-L-A, and uh, they're based in Ireland, I think Dublin. And this is their starter instrument for the concertina. Uh, as you can see, it's all black. It's got a little emblem. Uh, whoops. Yep, in the front there. Um, this one arrived to me with a few issues, unfortunately. So the first one being that the bellows are are just, they're a little bit leaky. Actually, today they're behaving pretty well, but um, they're just a little bit leakier than I might like. Um, overall, they're pretty good. The main issue with it, though, is uh, on the uh, lower side, uh, one of the buttons kept getting stuck on me. And so we had to take off the, the plate here and file it down around the... Um, around the edge of the hole and that seemed to help a little bit we also put some uh, finishing wax uh, around each one of the holes and that helped a little bit but all in all the construction is pretty good but not super great now compare that to this other one here yes 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 I have two concertinas to show you today this one here is the Trinity College one. Oh, by the way I got this one for about 500 even with shipping it was on sale um, so 500 with shipping all the way from Ireland, um, not too bad, um, especially considering it's a 30 button, uh, Anglo G C G concertina. This is the same type of concertina, uh, but it's not nearly as good. I'm going to play both of them for you here in a second, but this one has a little bit, a lot more leakage, uh, I think, um, can't really get the, the leakage to show. There we go. Uh, it's about the same amount of leakage, maybe. But um, some, of the, some of the reads just don't sound as good. So I'm going to play this one first, and then we'll play the McNeela one in a second. So let's try this. on that one. Obviously I don't know how to play yet. Uh, I'm just toggling through the buttons here. Okay, now we'll do the McNeela one, which I think sounds has a little bit more robust sounding reeds personally. But let's let's try it and find out because I've never actually done this side side by side before. <laughs> This one's a, this one in particular is a little wheezy. Let's see if we can catch it. Little little wheezy on that one, but otherwise I think it has just a slightly richer tone. Uh, probably can't catch it over a video like this very well, but it's just it has a little bit more um, uh, what do you call it timber or something? I don't know. I'm not a music guy. I'm just a an electrical engineer that has apparently too much time on his hands. Um, but anyways, so yeah, my my assessment is, you know, you can get this guy online for 400. The, the wood on this is a, probably not as good. This one's a little bit lighter. Um, just feels a little bit more um, 
cheap. It feels a little cheaper. But it's not a, it's not, you know, playing it again compared to the McNeela, it's not a bad little instrument. Uh, the straps on this are definitely worse. Much less comfortable uh, than this one. Okay. And uh, I also, with the McNeela one, I got this really nice case for it. All felt lined. The only problem with it is they have these, these screws they, they decided to use. Uh, just regular old screws, which scratch any surface that you put, <laughs> put this thing on. So it's, it's horrible for that. But it does protect the instrument really well compared to the Trinity College duffel bag that you throw it in, you know. So, yeah, um, I'd say overall I'm, I'm happier probably with the McNeela, but I need, I need to do some more modifications to it. I need to tighten up the bellows a little bit because they're a little bit leaky. Uh, more so than I would probably like. So yeah, I mean, we look here. That's uh, pretty quick leakage without pushing any buttons. So it kind of, like when it first kind of starts up, it's not as bad, and then it kind of starts getting some air in there. And I think part of that might be the buttons are getting stuck a little bit, but we'll see. Okay. Uh, oh, I should play something, or try to play something for you, and see if we can actually play it. stuck. You see that? Yeah, all by itself. <laughs> yeah, so uh, to be honest, the Trinity College one will do this occasionally too. Um, and I have not waxed or uh, tried to fix this side yet, but for a brand new instrument, I'm a little miffed. Um, so yeah, there we are. That's, I'm going to stop now because I probably need to fix this button whatever the hell just now happened to it um, so yeah concertinas man they're they're delicate little creatures and they fall apart if you sneeze so and a lot of new beginner instruments are like that um, hopefully I can make uh, some modifications here get some help making modifications here that'll mitigate a lot of those issues but uh, Generally, I'm, yeah, I, you know, <laughs> know what you're getting into with the concertinas because they can, they can have issues. Hmm. Anyways, um, some of you are probably curious, what else has Art been up to? If you've gotten this far in the video, you clearly have nothing else to do. So I'll talk to you for a minute about what I've been up to. Um, so after I got done teaching uh, ECE 2002, uh, which was the summer of the, the coronavirus, the first summer, apparently. Uh, now we are, uh, what are we doing? So I, I switched gears a little bit. I was working on a hyperbaric oxygen therapy project for uh, PTSD veterans. Since everything got shut down, we lost a bunch of our participants and it's been hell trying to recruit anybody for that. And our participant facilities have been languishing because our contracts come through the Indiana State Department of Health. And they got a little busy with the coronavirus. So things have not been progressing very quickly on that front. So I switched gears a little bit. I started working on something really interesting. Actually, I'm going to make another video about it because it's going to take too long to explain here. Um, but if you have, if you're one of the engineering students here at Purdue or anywhere else, uh, you can go on the IEEE site, and I am now published there uh, under uh, Euclidean Approximations uh, paper. Um, it's pretty cool stuff, actually. So uh, look forward to that video here in the near future. And um, the next paper will be entitled Every Pixel is a Donut, because in truth, when you do a tiling, 
uh, you can represent it kind of one of two ways. Uh, you can represent it as uh, gluing the edges of a square, uh, let's call it a square tiling, uh, gluing the edges of the square together in such a way that the left side is tied to the next tile's right side. Or you can think about it, or, and, and the top is glued to the bottom of the next tile, right? And you just keep on propagating in this way. Or you can glue a single element, a single square, or a single pixel to itself, uh, where you take these two sides and glue them together, thus making a cylinder, and you glue the top and bottom together. And if you take a, a cylinder, and then you glue the two uh, open holes on the top and bottom of that cylinder together, you end up with a donut shape. And so now you can see where this is going, right? So now every square tiling uh, that you end up doing really could be represented in some way, shape, or form as a torus or a donut. Now, what does that have to do with pixels in particular? Well, with pixels, we're thinking about, um, at least for me, in, in doing image processing stuff or looking at how things flow through a uh, discrete pixelated space, you gotta think, well, how is one pixel connected to another pixel? And so what I what I did was I said, well, you know, you can normally make this look more Euclidean. Well, like I said, I'll talk about this more later, but you make it look more Euclidean if you draw extra lines or extra connections to neighbors and give them Euclidean weight. So to go from corner to corner, you draw a line between the two and say, these two are connected with distance square root two. Uh, and then if you want to get even better and have better approximations of Euclidean space, you could say this pixel is connected to this pixel with distance square root of 5. And all pixels are connected to their knight's move neighbor by a square root of 5 edge. Well, you can do it that way, but uh, the cool thing about the paper is, is I found another way to do it. And the cool thing about that is there's a little bit less edges they have to deal with going out between each pixel. There are actually four uh, start and stop options. So normally you start and stop in the middle, right? Well, this one actually doesn't have, the way I did it, it doesn't have a middle anymore. It has four options for where to start and stop. And that has generated some really interesting uh, image decomposition stuff. Uh, so look forward to that. But if you think about it for a moment, it's really kind of arbitrary to just say, well, I'll just draw a straight line between these two. If I want the Euclidean distance, that's fine. But I could, since it's every pixel's a donut, I could just draw whatever graph, whatever network I want inside of that square. And as long as the minimum path that wraps around once this way is equal to one, and wraps around this way is equal to one, and the minimum path that goes around once each direction is square root of two, and the minimum path that goes around twice this way and once this way is equal to square root of five, etc. then the network fulfills the requirements of being what's called a chamfer. Or to put it uh, in terms of what we just talked about, being more Euclidean-like, you know, the straight, straight line distances throughout all of the space. So that's what we've been up to. Um, in other news, we have a lot uh, more animals on the farm. I will have to show you those in another video because I am stuck here at school. It's snowing outside right now. And uh, what else? We got six goats now uh, compared to the, I think, zero goats we had back when I filmed uh, 20,002. Um, the garden did not work out very successfully and last year uh, it became a chicken run entirely so we're back to that um, and what else have we been up to uh, still doing some honey production still have chickens all of the tomathies are have gone to freezer camp uh, or have um, met an untimely demise in a smoker and what else have we done oh yeah we had another baby <laughs> I should have probably led with that um, that's okay. He's, he's not old enough to know what's up yet, so I won't get in trouble for a few years at least. Um, unless my wife watches this, in which case then, then I'm sorry I forgot about our, our fourth child as being less important than goats. Uh, you probably would have done the same thing actually now that I think about it. <laughs> um, so yeah, Elwyn Douglas was born 
uh, back in May of this year, 2022, or 2021, excuse me. And uh, so, yeah, it's been pretty great. Healthy, fat, and very strong. Um, the oldest kid in the videos, Wraith, has been constructing stuff like crazy. I wish I had it here, but he made a hydraulic robot hand. He's built the Saturn V Lego set. I'll have to give you a tour of the house when I when I get back home, and uh, we'll interview everybody. And also, uh, my wife's father has moved in with us. Um, so yeah, it's now seven people in my house, all supported by graduate stipends. So you know, keep buying those textbooks because <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> uh, I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine, really. Send money. Send pizza rolls, actually. That'll be fine. If you can just subsidize my pizza roll uh, budget, that would be just grand. Um, <laughs> actually, I need to go on a fasting diet or something. I'm getting too fat being a grad student, so not, not, not as much exercise as advertised. And believe me, there wasn't much exercise advertised in the first place. So, yeah, um, not doing great there, but... Uh, um, that's okay. We'll, we'll get it figured out eventually. And that's pretty much it for now. So we'll talk at you later. And uh, happy, you know, I don't know if you came here to see the concertina review or to, to see how art's doing from ECE 2002. So anyways, whoever you are, I hope you have a great day. And I hope you enjoyed any part of this video, uh, rambling nonsense. See you later.